Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. Today was max effort squat day and we increased band tension. Now this is supposed to only be 65 pounds of bands, but it felt a hell of a lot heavier than the 50 pounds I did two weeks ago. Uh, so much so that even I, I don't think I could have got the same bar weight that I got with 50 pounds. Uh, it felt like a, a true max or getting close to a true max when I just did 405 against 65 pounds of band tension. And I think that's one of the things that we've got to remember when it comes to training against bands. It's something I point out to people. Do not, do not make the mistake of, of assuming that your band tension is going to work like plates do or chains do in terms of weight. Uh, in, in other words, my max on a box squat right now, and I'm probably a hair stronger already, 405 in plates is what I got with this. You guys have seen me do over 100 pounds of chains. Over 100 pounds of chains. And it was easier. It felt easier, I think, with 105 pounds of chains. With 405 on the bar, moved just as fast, if not faster, than 65 pounds of band did with the same weight. So it puts it into perspective. Uh, training against bands is a totally different beast. I like it because it's so difficult, but you have to be explosive to do it. And, and again, bands just jerk you out of your bar path. They jerk you out of your bar path big time. Uh, the other thing I'm going to point out, I felt a little nauseated today. I didn't feel my best. And I'm not going to factor that in with squats because a lot of times I can squat PR when I'm actually sick. All right? I don't have any problem squatting when I don't feel well. So it, I don't think it affected my performance in any way. This is this is what my max is right now against this much band tension on a box. All right, going about two inches below parallel. It's my max. And someone asked about that, and I've shown you guys photos from the side. But I think my back is looking thicker. I think we can say that. I didn't realize that. I just now look at this footage. I haven't even seen this footage yet. I just now started looking at it. Like, man, my back is thicker. Uh, but because I didn't feel well, I decided not to deadlift heavy today. No deadlifting, and I said I was going to do good mornings instead, uh, because that's what you can do. The system allows for that. But I decided to implement today the assistance movement that I think I really need. And mother of God, especially feeling a little sick to my stomach, I thought I was going to vomit after every set of these. Safety bar box squats. I felt so weak on these, and they pulled me over so hard. It made it difficult for me to breathe, made me feel like I was going to puke. I think we found a weak link. Just like with every other assistance movement, just like we brought the incline up till it stalled, I'm going to change that out. So what we do with these assistance movements, movements that we know look like they can address our weak points and our main lifts, we come in and we mess with them and we train them. These are hard for me right now. And I've said before that I might implement these one day. Months ago, I said I was going to start doing these later. I felt like they would be a tremendous, tremendous assistance movement for the sumo deadlift. And now that I'm doing them and I can feel where they're working and I feel how hard and awkward this lift is, this needs to stay in my routine. Now, I'm going to dread doing it because I thought I was going to puke. I guess the most nauseating crap I've done in a while. But... Again, it's a weak link. It's a weak link. And I feel like if I get really strong on these safety bar box squats, it's going to carry over to my squat and deadlift. And that's the name of the game. And yes, I'm doing these on the low box. There's no pad on there, so this is straight to a 12-inch box. And, man, they are hard. And, and I can't reiterate that enough. So if people think I might be exaggerating when I say how difficult these are. I only have 295 pounds on the bar. Remember, this is a 65-pound bar, not a 45. 295. And these things are brutal. So she's going to a deep box. But I feel them working everything. I felt my quads. I felt my thoracic erectors, my lats, my traps, everything. All that stuff got lit up. So I need to get strong at these. I need to get strong at these. They're a weak link for me. And you know what? Some of the most impressive squatters that I know personally are monsters on these safety bar box squats. Like Clint Darden. Like he's, he's a friend of mine. He's, he's monstrous on these. Who else is monstrous on, on the safety bar squat in general? Uh, Chris Duffin. I, I like Chris. He's a good guy. 
I've actually sent a family member of mine to him for prep coaching. Um, I'm not going to get into who or what's going on there. But yes, I did refer refer that over and he took a family member of mine on as a meat prep coach. So um, I like Chris, but he's monstrously strong on safety bar squats. I, I need to get strong at these. I feel like this is the final thing that I need to really sort my squat. In addition to getting learning that wider stance, this is going to be a fantastic exercise. So I need to get really, really good at it. Just like I've been working on the incline. Of course, now I'm going to sub that out for floor presses, I think, tomorrow. Work on floor presses and come back to the incline now that it's stalled. But again, these assistance movements, picking the right ones, and just how awkward this is and how weak I am at it and how hard it is, I, I know this one's going to go a long way. Because what is it that we need to look at? You need to find what you're worst at, particularly when you know it's a lift that carries over to your main lifts, right? When you know it's a good exercise, when you're weak at it, you know that you don't have the musculature that you need. You know you've got a muscle imbalance that needs to be fixed. And I feel like they're going to work wonders for me. Because I need just more upper back thickness and thoracic region thickness and all that. Because my back is wide. My back is thick. But I feel like that whole mid-trap, thoracic erector, all of that needs a lot of work. So today I decided to do my good mornings again. Uh, I'm going to do them twice this week, so they're going to get done on the speed day too. I wanted to focus on them mainly on speed day, but on days like today where I don't feel like I can deadlift, because I'm going to get 20 sets against bands later this week, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, I thought I'd come in and do them today. And what am I going to do? I'm going to start adding chains. Because the top part is the hardest and my neck can be a limiting factor. The top part is, is really going to help in a lot of ways. But getting too low down, it puts too much stress on my neck. Well, chains will, will eliminate some of that. And I think for now, I'm just going to progress on chain weight. I'm just going to stick with the same plates and see if over time we can add chains so that we just get a better strength curve. Uh, but I used to do these with three plates aside with a, a light amount of chain weight before. I used to do that. And it helped tremendously with stuff. So I need to get back up to that point to where I can do a lot of weight on these. And when we start doing up over 300 pounds of total plate and chain weight for work sets, I'll probably be pretty strong. Definitely help my deadlift. It'll help that, that issue with my squats too. But uh, yeah, definitely seeing the difference. Even my back is, is still improving. That's, that's the crazy part. You know, a lot of guys are like, man, your back is great. Even the bodybuilders. But it just always improves. You know, it's some, all the stuff I do for it, it just always gets bigger and thicker. Um, so I guess I can't complain about that. Even if I don't have great, great arms, at least I got a good back, right? <laughs> we got to be grateful for what we have. You know, we're, we all have our weak points genetically. None of us other than a handful of people are university blessed. Sometimes you got to be grateful for what you have and not worry about the things that you don't. You know, you can't fix what you can't fix. But at least my back grows easily. <laughs> uh, yeah, the loose skin is obviously still there and stuff too in the fat. But that's going to come down over time as I keep losing body fat. Um, I've just got to be patient with that. You know, I get a lot of people asked stuff like, are you going to get surgery for that? I'm like, no, that'll take me out of my training. Why would I spend thousands and thousands of dollars and then disrupt my training over something so cosmetic? It's just not worth it to me. Um, it's, it's, it, wouldn't, it really wouldn't be worth it. You know what? It'll tighten up more as I get leaner. And if it doesn't tighten up enough, I'm, I'm really not going to worry about it. But ultimately, if, if I lose more body fat, it's going to get tighter. Because that's what loose skin is. It's that last layer of fat stuck to the loose skin. But, uh, yeah, you can see me kind of having to move my neck there because it's tough on my neck. But, you know, I mean, the training's coming along. Everything's coming along well. I feel like the training is dialed in. I'm really enjoying the system of training. It's working out well. And it gives enough variety that I think people enjoy it. It's just that I think the downside is that some people who try to watch this, they're, they're less advanced lifters and... They're not going to be able to implement this stuff where they don't have access to the sort of equipment to implement this stuff. And so some people aren't always going to enjoy that, but, but I'm enjoying it. And what people need to remember with this stuff, it, it is about me training. I'm just documenting my training. I'm not necessarily showing you guys what to do. A lot of this isn't meant to show off in any way. These are just, this is my training numbers, guys. It's my training numbers. It is what it is. You know, like people have asked me, you're going to wear your chains. No chains are standardized. Chains are standardized in America. 
Uh, then I thought, oh, what the hell? People ask me what I do for grip work, and I don't normally film any grip work because it's boring. You know, you guys are probably watching this. You know, still my neck is still bothering me there. And it's like, why don't you show your, any of your grip training? Because it's boring. I don't do a lot of grip work. I'm not a grip specialist. I just need a little bit of extra grip work to help with my deadlift. So, you know, a couple days a week, I come in and do some pinch block work. These are for a longer hold with a pretty lightweight. Uh, some days I might I go heavier, you know. But I'm using my thickest block. That's a three-inch block. I have a couple different size blocks. The thicker block, it's harder, so you can't handle as much weight. But, you know, it's boring stuff. That's why I don't show it. So you guys get to see one set. I'll end up doing three sets of this. So I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.